the ELISA test, an antibody antigen reaction. ELISA is the acronym for enzyme-linked immune sorbent assay. ELISA test can be used to identify the presence and or quantity of proteins, normally antibodies or antigens in bodily fluids. The ELISA can be used to test for a variety of conditions including infectious disease, pregnancy, hormone levels, allergens, or the presence of illegal drugs in the blood or urine. Knowing the antibody-antigen re reaction is important to understanding the ELISA test. Antibodies are proteins produced by the immune system in response to foreign substances called antigens. An antigen could be a microorganism such as a virus or bacteria, or just a foreign chemical or protein such as pollen. When antigen enters the body, the body undergoes a complex set of steps in order to create antibodies specifically for antigen. The antibodies have the ability to bond to antigens and make themselves a target for the body's immune system to attack and destroy. For example, when a flu virus enters the body, a specific antibody is created to combat that flu virus. The ELISA test uses this antibody antigen reaction to identify whether a patient may have a certain antibody or antigen in the system. For example, an ELISA test can be used to determine whether an individual has antibodies in the blood for H. I and I virus. The, pri the presence of large amounts of these antibodies in the blood means that the body created them in response to an H1N1 infection. ELISA tests can be qualitative or quantitative. Qualitative ELISA tests identify whether a, certain, a specific antibody, antigen, or protein is present, present. The quantitative tests identify how much of the specific antibody, antigen, or protein is present. There are several different types of ELISA tests, but the general concept remains the same. Samples of human body fluids such as blood or wine are exposed. Blood or urine are exposed to a plate called microteeter that has anywhere from 4 to 300 tiny wells on its surface. The wells have an antibody or antigen attached to the surface depending on the antibody or antigen being sought. Through a series of steps, the sample fluid from the patient is exposed to the wells. If the protein is the med is if the protein the medical team is looking for is in the body fluid sample, it will attach itself to antibody antigen that is in place on the well. So this attachment eventually creates a color change that identifies the protein's presence. Modeling carrying capacity, carrying capacity and limiting factors. Carrying capacity of an ecosystem is the maximum population size the environment can support. The growth of the population is controlled by factors within the environment that limit the population size. These are called limiting factors. They most commonly include availability of living and non-living resources, predation, competition, disease. They can be density dependent meaning the factor's impact is based on the size, density of the population, or density independent, meaning the factors will have the same impact regardless of the population size. Competition is density de dependent where natural disasters are density independent. Carrying capacity moderates the growth of populations by slowing, stopping, or increases growth that is dependent upon re limited resources or conditions. For example, if the food source of a deer population can only support a thousand deer. That is the carrying capacity for that population. As the population of deer increases, the food sources decrease and the competition occurs. Those deer that are better adapted to obtain the food source will survive while others die off. Exponential growth versus logistical growth. The two most common types of population growth are exponential and logistic population growth. Exponential growth occurs when there's an unlimited natural resources available. It cannot occur indefinitely, and it's eventually a population will run out of resources. Logistic growth takes into account these limiting factors and carrying capacity of population in a specific ecosystem. The depletion of resource will slow the rate of growth, eventually reaching a plateau. This is the carrying capacity of a population is represented by the letter K. Observations of growth in a population will produce the most accurate results. This is not always possible. 
particularly in species that grow large populations quickly, such as bacteria. For this reason, scientists use mathematical and computational models to represent population growth, carrying capacity of the human population. Human population growth is a bit more complex. There are additional variables such as industrialization and healthcare that must be considered. In general, when the population is below carrying capacity, it will increase, and when it's above carrying capacity, it will decrease. For a wide range of estimates have been proposed, the carrying capacity of the human population on Earth is theorized to be approximately 10 billion people. The world population at the end of 2013 was 71 billion people and is projected to reach its carrying capacity by the year 2050. Lab 9A and Lab 9B review questions. What is carrying capacity? Carrying capacity is the maximum population that an ecosystem can support. Why is carrying capacity a population important to a healthy ecosystem? It helps regulate the population based off limited resources and conditions. What are limiting factors and give three examples. Limiting factors have the greatest effect resulting in a population lowering. Three examples are competition, plants versus animals for resources, weather, drought, can wipe out population and animal resources, and predation, predator versus prey relationship. What is the difference between a density independent and density depend in independent limiting factor? Give an example of each. A density-dependent limiting factor is influenced by the population count and area, which a density-independent limiting factor can still live a effect no matter the density. A density-dependent limiting factor is parasitism and disease. Parasites can live off hosts and can weak, can end up killing them. A density-independent limiting factor is a human activity such as forest clearing. Compare and contrast exponential growth versus logistic growth. Exponential growth is when there's unlimited natural resources which causes growth in a population. When logistical growth, there is a depletion of resources which slows growth rates. What is carrying capacity and how does it impact population? It's the maximum amount organisms and population can be supported under the current amount of resources. It impacts population because it limits populations from growing massively due to finite resources. What is the difference between a biome and microbiome? Biome is a distribution of organisms which factor into many types of climate and plants, while microbiome is a microscopic environment with many types of unseen small organisms. Describe the system biotic relationship with humans and gut flora. The symbolic relationship between humans and gut flora is it can help humans immune system and regulate the body or can cause disease and attack the body's internal systems. What type of organism makes up our gut flora? Gut flora is make, mainly make up bacteria, a type of organism. How is microflora population different in young and elderly individuals? Diagram A. Elderly fig people have bacteroids as a dominant figure, while younger people have firmicles as a dominant figure. How is microflora population different between regions? Diagram B. Why do you think it's different? It's Florence, Italy has more effective bacterium than Firkin Faso, Africa. It is different because of the food they eat since it contains bacteria. What it can cause an imbalance in gut flora populations. Dysbiosis can cause an imbalance in gut flora population, altering the gut using antibiotics, which impact microbiotic populations. What is a cause of foodborne illness? Give a specific example of bacteria that can ca cause food poisoning. Explain the symptoms and cause. Imbalance in the gut flora, which causes pathogen organisms and the intestinal tract. Systems are nausea, vomiting, stomach cramps, and diarrhea. Salmonella is a specific example of bacteria that can cause food poisoning. Population imbalance, gastrointestinal distress. The intestinal tract microbiome is a sensitive ecosystem. Each population is kept in balance through predation. Competition for living and non-living resources, disease, and other complex interactions. The upper limits of a population that the intestinal tract is capable of maintaining while maintaining a healthy environment is called carrying capacity. It is a delicate balancing of act that occurs within the body to maintain what is considered a healthy population of gut flora. In addition to normal interaction between species and population, outside influence can also impact the gut flora. Some of these external influence include broad broad spectrum antibiotics which are often used to treat bacterial infections but can often impact the number of bacteria in the normal gut flora. This can allow other pathogenic bacteria the chance to grow which can cause a different type of infection. This is why patients are told to eat yogurt while on antibiotics. 
Antibiotics can also irritate the intestines, directly causing antibiotic-associated diarrhea, AAD. If a speci species surpasses its carrying capacity or a population becomes too low, it results in an imbalance in the ecosystem, and that can result in gastrointestinal distress. A few example of population imbalances that can cause gastrointestinal di distress include Translocation. When the normal gut flora move inside intestines, they cause infections in other parts of the body, particularly in the circulatory system. This usually occurs when there is a higher than normal population of gut and flora in the small intestine. Cancer. A higher than normal population of Clostridium and bacteroid bacteria has been associated with increased intestinal tumor growth rate. Inflammatory bowel disease, IBD. While not thoroughly researched, is believed an imbalance in the population of gut flora and colon results in overreaction of the immune system. It's damaged the colon and results in IBD. Pop obesity. In experience, you, experiments using mice has been found obese mice have a higher population of flumicutes and a lower population of bacterial disease, while lean mice had the opposite, lower flumicutes and higher bacterial disease. Bacterial population imbalances in foodborne illness. In general, an imbalance of the normal gut flora opens the floor for pathogenic organisms that would normally be prevented from causing serious issues, giving them the opportunity to create disease in the human host. Most often, these pathogenic organisms are the intestinal tract from food and a threat for called the foodborne illness, also known as food poisoning. The CDC estimates that approximately 48 million cases of foodborne illnesses occur literally in the United States, costing more than $5 billion in healthcare costs. Bacteria are the most common culprits, and 90% of foodborne illnesses are caused by only eight species. These include E. coli, Sucuris, Cosmophrine, Salmonella, and Bacteria. A small population of these bacteria are normally found in raw foods. An individual must consume a high amount of these bacteria to become ill. Improper storage, handling, and cooking of food can allow bacteria to grow exponentially. When a large population of these pathogenic bacteria is consumed, the population commits to gut flora. This may result in a condition called symbiosis, which a population of pathogenic bacteria increases while gut flora population decreases. Carrying capacity in foodborne illness. Background, microflora of the intestinal tract. Ecosystems have carrying capacity, which are limits to the number of organisms and populations they can support. These limits cause result from such factors as the availability of living and non-living resources, and so, from such challenges as predation, competition, and disease. Organisms who have the capacity to produce population of great size if you're not for the fact that environments and resources are finite. The, the fundamental tension affects the uh, abundance, number of individual species in any given e ecosystem. This is true even on the microscopic level. There's an entire unseen world of containing many types of organisms. These microscopic environments are referred to as microbiomes with living components called microbiota or microflora. One of these microbiomes is the human intestinal tract. A symbiotic relationship has developed between humans and the microbiota that exists within our intestines. These organisms benefit primarily from obtaining energy from undigested carbohydrates, while humans benefit in a variety of ways, such as protection of pathogenic or disease-causing organisms. Known as gut flora, there are 10 times more of these healthy microorganisms in the intestinal tract there are cells in the human body. They number more than 100 trillion. Researchers estimate there are 300 and 1,000 different species, but only some information know about them. The gut flora consists primarily of bacteria, about 99%, but can also include fu fungi and protists. In fact, bacteria are so prevalent that dried fecal matter contains more bacteria than actual feces. While the fact that we are hosts to many microbioorganisms may sound disturbing, gut flora is in 10 grow to a healthy digestive system. They are capable of producing vitamins to vitamin K and protein, 
producing hormones that assist in fat storage, fermenting unused energy, boosting the immune system, and preventing the growth of pathogenic bacteria. Some research have even suggested that gut flora should be considered an additional organ due to its function. A gut flora is predominantly helpful under certain conditions, some of the species are careful, capable of causing disease or increasing the risk of cancer. Where does gut flora come from? The womb is a sterile environment, and therefore babies are born with a sterile intestinal tract. At birth, the intestinal tract is colonized with microorganisms from the mother's intestinal tract and vaginal canal. The gut flora becomes more complex as the child ages, and the microorganism population fluctuates and changes through the human lifetime, depending on our age, diet, health and even region of the world in which an individual lives. For example, the species and population of microflora versus young versus elder individual are very different. Microflora can also be very different among children only or other same age individuals. Diagram B summarizes data of research that compared the population of select bacteria in children in an industrialized region of Italy and a rural region of Africa.